What's going on people? This is Ellie Wananda and I'm going to talk in this video for a short time about drugs and psychedelics. So drugs, drugs are all around us. Obviously when you hear the term drugs you think of illicit so-called substances or illegal substances, controlled substances. But drugs are all around us. For example, a lot of you probably have coffee in your, in your cupboards. Uh, probably most of you have sugar in your cupboards. Uh, unfortunately, you probably have white sugar in your cupboards. And a lot of you probably have alcohol in your, in your fridges or in your cupboards, you know? Very common. Drugs are all around us. If you just think of, if you want to call drugs uh, substances which can have an impact on your mind, state of mind, then drugs are everywhere. Drug, you know, Everything that we eat can have, a, can have an impact on our minds, if you think about it. You know, you eat something, you feel better after eating it. You know, that's why people comfort eat, for example. People comfort eat because when they eat, it has an a effect on them which, you know, releases certain neurotransmitters like dopamine and it makes them feel satiated, makes them feel happy, makes them feel calm. Uh, so drugs are all around us, but obviously uh, the, the controversial thing or the thing that's more controversial is the illegal drugs. So called. But what I want to first say is that, you know, that that division between illegal and illegal, legal and illegal is a bit arbitrary because, frankly, you know, just because some lawmaker somewhere decides that some substance is now not allowed to be used doesn't really change its intrinsic value or quality. And for a lot of older black people in particular, you know, they are completely against the use of anything that which which governments have called illegal so for example a lot of the elders will be well up for alcohol drinking loads of alcohol drinking loads of caffeine but wholly against anything to do with for example cannabis weed uh, obviously amongst younger generations that's not so much the case you know weed is very commonly used very very commonly smoked uh, by by younger people and what I want to do, what I want to just suggest is that, you know, I, I don't have a position really with regard to cannabis. I mean, I, per, me personally, I, I probably think that all so-called drugs should be decriminalised uh, and, and, and should not be illegal. Because I think, personally, I think that, you know, adults in particular, we should have the right to decide what goes into our bodies. And it makes a lot more sense for a society to, uh, you know, to focus on actual harms, actual things that cause ill in our society and not to focus on, uh, you know, what I think are symptoms. Misuse of some of these things is a, sympt are symptoms of, is a symptom of wider problems. Why do people get drunk? It's not because of the alcohol. You know, why do people, uh, you know, become addicted to coke or heroin or whatever it might be it's not because of the substances themselves it's we have to look at what drives people to become addicted to these things what drives people to feel the need to take a substance in such quantities that they become hooked on it that's what we need to drive to and all that always points us in the direction of social factors you know but obviously ain't nobody want to look at social factors people just want to blame individuals for the problems that they have but so that's, that's, my, that's my overall view with regard to substances, with regard to so-called drugs. What I just want to suggest is that, particularly as black people, I'd like to suggest that maybe, and you know, I'm not advocating for anything per se, I'm not advocating for anybody to do anything, but potentially there's, there's a role to play by so-called psychedelics, much more of a role to play by, you know, by so-called psychedelics with regard to us managing our mental and physical well-being. And I say that because I've, I've been doing a lot of research and reading over the last uh, several months, a year or so, into psychedelics, particularly into mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, aka magic mushrooms. And what I found is that these mushrooms, which up until about 20 years ago, you could buy these mushrooms, oh, sorry, you could pick up, pick these mushrooms freely anywhere here in the UK and it was fine you could pick them and eat them or whatever but then I think in the early 2000s they were you're now not allowed to pick them and and eat them which is ridiculous because nature grows them they're just there they grow but if you pick them that's a criminal act I believe but 
what was I saying? Psilocybin, yeah, mush, what I've seen is that these psilocybin mushrooms are actually, have been shown in lots and lots of uh, trials, clinical trials, to be potentially really powerful in helping people to, uh, to deal with some pretty serious uh, issues, psychological issues, mental issues. So, for example, there are a lot of studies where or well, there are studies where they've used it on terminal cancer patients who are really, really scared and worried about their cancer. And, you know, having gone through this treatment, these, you know, a lot of these patients are saying, are people are saying that they no longer fear the cancer, they no longer fear death, and they're in a much better state. Similarly, with severe depression, there were many trials taking place in London, at UCL, I believe, and at John Hop Johns Hopkins University in the United States and other places on the potential efficacy of psilocybin mushrooms to uh, treat what they call treatment resistant severe depression. So people who are severely depressed and you know the, the, the pharmacological drugs that they're giving them don't work, they uh, go through this treatment with mushrooms and it's having some amazing results. And I think the key thing, the key thing to, to stress here is that it's not really even just, say, the substance itself. One of the problems I think we have, particularly as black people, but just generally, is that when it comes to something like cannabis, weed, you know, it's just smoked just left, right and centre. You're just, oh, you're just doing whatever. Just smoke. Sit down and smoke. Sit down and smoke. Go to a party, smoke. Uh, eat food, smoke. Smoke, 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 weed. And it's very irreverent, if you like. It's not really connected with any other work on our well-being, our, our, our frame of mind, our frame of thinking and so forth, for most people, I'd say. And I'm speaking to someone who many, many years ago in my, in my youth, I used, I used to use, use them herbs quite a lot, but that's all I used to do was smoke it, go out, party and smoke, drink as well at the same time and so forth. But when you look at these trials that they're doing with psilocybin mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, you know, they, uh, the, the, the compound, the chemical compound is called psilocybin, which, which uh, gets converted into psilocin. And that compound has a, they're finding that it has this really powerful effect on the brain circuitry. You know, there's signs that it might rebuild interconnectedness between, you know, all the synapses and connections in the brain. I don't know the full technical terms, but, the, the, you know, it has an effect of rebuilding those pathways. And, and my understanding is that when it comes to something like severe depression or that kind of stuff, all of those pathways have been damaged and are, and are dead, whereas the mushrooms help to reconnect. They reconnect so many areas of our brains. And the way they do it in the trials is that it's not just, OK, here you go. Here's a, here's a mushroom. Go, you know, let's see what happens. Come back in a month and are you better? They, there's a whole long program. Most of the program is the before and after. So beforehand, there'll be a whole load of therapy, see cognitive therapy, talking therapy and so forth, framing their dep the depression, framing their anxiety, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, you know, that goes on for an extended period of time. And then they give, they, you know, they, they get, put them with some, a really trusted uh, person, a trusted helper to, to lie down in a room, quiet room, put uh, iPads on, eye face masks or whatever on their eyes, if that makes sense music on the headphones and a really calm room and then they administer the, 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 the psilocybin and then they spend several hours basically with that person there, trusted person there who's there with them kind of got, you know, helping them if they have any issues, they kind of help to reassure them and calm them down. Then afterwards, they do what they call integration, which is they have a long period of time to discuss, okay, how was it? What happened? You know, talking through what, what is this what are some of the things that realizations that they might have had with regard to their thoughts, their thought processes, all that kind of stuff. And that's, I think that's key with regard to any of these substances is, it, you know, if you're thinking of any substance that you're just going to do when you're partying or just whatever is not going to have much of an effect. Whereas if you're doing something like this in such a controlled way, in a careful way like that, not necessarily in a medical setting, but just doing it in a very careful, um, patient well thought out uh, way i from what i've seen from what i'm seeing from the research that i'm doing that is what's happening and a really amazing impact on people's mental well-being and i think there may well be something in there for us particularly as black people who are generally from what i've seen really kind of shy away from anything to do with these things psychedelics mushrooms or whatever 
Maybe, maybe these are tools that we can add to our armory when it comes to our individual well-being and also our collective well-being. But anyway, just some thoughts there. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do, you, you know, are you, do you use some of these uh, psychedelics or entheogens, as people call them? If so, any experiences you'd like to share, that'll be all good. But just a, just a short video there just to kind of share some thoughts I've been having with regard to this subject. All right, take care and I will see you soon. Peace.